the following video has no affiliation with MGM or, or Neon Productions and is made to get out my own thoughts and opinions. With that out of the way, let's begin. Why Kissy Sakuai is the most underrated Bond girl. So yesterday, I was watching some James Bond with my grandma on this pretty nice set, actually. Yesterday, we are watching these two films. And so far, her favorite of all the movies is this one. Most because how they treat the women as pretty much equals to Bond. And, um, which reminded me of a certain video I seen. I'm going to show you which one. Link to this video will be in the description. One of the main things I disagree with this video is who the worst one is. Bond girls who I identify as the main Bond girls of the Eon series. Now this is by far the hardest of all of the main James Bond film elements for me to rank because quite honestly there are no characters on this list that I actively dislike. It feels unfair to put anyone at the bottom of this list. But someone has to come at the bottom and honestly when I started putting this list together I never thought it would be Kissy from You Only Live Twice but it was really only when thinking about the order of these characters that it kind of dawned on me that everyone else on this list has at least a one standout moment in their respect films for me personally. Whether that be a crucial role in helping Bond achieve his mission, or uh, having a particularly kick-ass moment, or a particularly sexy moment, or a particularly funny moment. I can cite bits in all of their respective films where they make a real impact. All except for Kissy Suzuki. Think again, please. And maybe that's not surprising. I mean, her name isn't even mentioned in the film until the very end credits. And despite being the Bond girl by virtue of making it all the way to the sex dinghy with Bond at the end, Aki is a character in the same film who makes a much greater impression but is off during the midsection of the film and pretty much just replaced with Kissy for little reason other than just fitting another beautiful woman in the film. And indeed, Mie Hama, who plays Kissy, is stunningly attractive. Please just take it for granted that that applies to all of the women on this list actually and she spends a good deal of the film running around in this super skimpy bikini so perhaps the, the highlight yeah perhaps that's a highlight enough for some people but overall despite my like of the actress she absolutely doesn't do anything wrong here the writing only allows her to make an appearance like way late into the film and while she provides solid allyship for bond throughout the climax i just don't feel like she makes enough of an impression to be competing with any of the other characters on this list unfortunately first First of all, well, yes, it is said what happened to Aki, but they didn't just kill her off just to kill her off and replace her with Kissy Sakuai. They did it for this reason. So the idea was that where they would be brought to England, taught English, be involved in a purely English-speaking atmosphere of the United Kingdom where they would speak Japanese. Akiko Wakabara, she was very good. She really learned very, very fast. I think I will enjoy very much serving under you. The other girl, Mia, tried desperately hard, and I saw Chamber and I said, look, Chamber, this is a big problem to us. It's no good for her and it's no good for us. Will you take her out to dinner and tell her that she has to go back to Japan? He looked a bit glum and he said, well, I'll try. And he took her out that night and the next morning uh, he came in and I said, well, Tamba, how did it go? He said, tonight she commits suicide. She will jump out of the window at the Dorchester. <gasps> Listen, you know, he, he did literally go cold at that point. So, of course, I rushed to Harry and rushed to Cubby and said, my God, we've got a problem here. Cubby said, you know, I don't think she'd be so bad in the film, <laughs> which we all agreed very quickly that she wouldn't be so bad in the film. Ultimately, Miyahama switches parts with Akiko Wakabayashi, and Akiko suggests her new character not be called Suki, but Aki.
you know, for the stuff I think the character does well, well, take a look at these clips. She shows professionalism. That is your bed. I shall sleep over there. We're supposed to be married. Think again, please. You gave false name to Chris. Yes, but we must keep up appearances. We're on our honeymoon. No honeymoon. This is business. Must be a long tunnel. Uh, miles of it. it. Leads all the way. Right up to the top there. And that's where we have to go next. Do you think you can make it? Of course. Deep business. Good. She also brings back up. She's also able to hold her own, even when she's literally half naked. My problems with her. Number one, her hair. Just look how perfect her hair is after being in the ocean. Number two, how she didn't get a single scratch being half naked. Thank <laughs> you. 
Number three, the weird situation with the shirt. You see how James Bond let this girl in the cold like this? Where well, he could have offered a shirt, and as we see later, he has this weird ninja outfit underneath. Anyway. When she gets back up, the cavalry puts her in this. Okay, better than nothing, but... I feel like that's not going to have that much protection. Like, they could have offered one of their ninja jumpsuits or something. I mean, they probably had some padding on, I think. I feel like she's more vulnerable like that. And what's even the point of adding that to the actress's wardrobe if they're just going to take it off later? But yeah, none of this stuff ruins the character for me. And I don't think so for my grandma as well. I think she's about probably as equal as Aki. Well, let me know if you want me to do a video on Aki later down the line. Anyway, see ya. Please like and subscribe.